Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto, the Lucky Pharaohs. It is 12.15 p.m. and here's Ziggy and Nancy was howling at the door to Boo's room. There's Boo by the window. So I opened the door a little bit and I was like, you want to see Boo? What's going on inside? And I let her in because she was really insistent on howling and meowing. And I was like, okay, go in, go into the room. So she came in the room and she went underneath the day sofa. And then she did what she always does is she sticks her head out over here. And then she went over here and she was ready to jump on Boo. And let me show you what my new cat deterrent is. So uh, in the past I've been using a water bottle because uh, quite a few of the viewers suggested to use a water bottle and it works when Nancy or Richard have been trying to jump on the cats or attack them. But to be honest, I'm not really good at using the water bottle and there's been more issues with it than success because one time I had it on mist instead of spray and then another time I just, you know, had really bad aim. So there's Boo and Sammy. Sammy just wants to be near a window. She doesn't want to upset Boo. You guys are okay. You're okay. But let me show you what I found that works better than a spray bottle. At least so far it has. Can you see this? This is a mini tambourine. It's actually a foot tambourine. So it has this elastic and the and the elastic goes under your foot and then this is on top of your foot and if you tap your foot it makes a tambourine sound this is kind of like a novelty musical instrument but i had one in the house and it works so when nancy was over here getting ready to jump on boo all i had to do was shake this like that and she immediately flew underneath the day sofa there she is now she just heard it and she left the room so this has been working good so far with eliminating fights. So I just wanted to mention this because this is a convenient option other than using a water bottle. I know I've also had suggestions to put some plastic beads in a water bottle and then just shake that. And you could probably do that also. So here's Nancy. I believe Ringo is under the day sofa right now. And there's Goldie. So if Nancy goes through to the other end... <laughs> Then uh, I'll show you how it works. See, here she is. Boo's hissing at her. I'm waiting for her to come out farther so I could just show you. Now she's hanging out underneath the cat tower. Can you see her there? She's on the bottom right underneath the platform. I don't mind if she looks at Boo, it's just if she's gonna try to attack him. So I moved one of the litter boxes out of here yesterday. I need to rearrange them in the house because I got a new litter box enclosure, like a new piece of furniture. I don't mind if she's curious about Boo. I don't mind if you know, she wants to look at him, but if she thinks she's going to start trouble with him, then that's the issue. Mm. 
And there's Bowie's just hanging out by the window. He has his back to her, but I could tell he's paying attention. See how that worked? Now if I wanted to get all the cats out from under the day sofa, all I have to do is raise the blanket and shake the tambourine under there. They will all run out of the room. So I think I'm going to do that right now because I need to get some work done today. I was in the middle of working while Nancy was howling, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to see what's going on. and. Little did I know other cats would follow her in here. So right now it's Ringo and Nancy. And there's Ziggy. Ziggy's been such a good girl. So Ziggy's a good girl. Goldie's a good girl. I would not mind leaving either of them in here with Boo. I'm fine with that. My issue is with Nancy, which hopefully she'll leave right now. And Ringo, even though I think Ringo will stay underneath the day sofa because he has attacked Splash in the past, that's why I don't want to leave him in here. Um, if I'm not in here, like, just kind of um, chaperoning them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoot him out of here also with the tambourine. That cleared out all the cats. This is my new piece of cat litter furniture. I got this on Amazon for Prime Day and it was just put together the other day and the cats have been using it for a few days. So I thought I would film a quick video about it before I start cleaning everything up and moving everything around because the old piece of litter furniture that used to be here is going to be relocated to a different room. So I got this unit on sale. It was a little over $100, but I really liked it because it was wider than the other unit that I had here. And also it just looks completely different. It's white, the other one was black. It has kind of like a farmhouse or coastal aesthetic to it. And I like that much better than the other black one that was here. I also like that it doubles as a bench. So you can see this top area is a nice size bench and I have it here near my front door so it's super convenient if I need to sit here and put some shoes on or something like that. Or if I want to put something on top, it's nice and convenient also. Um, there are still some stickers on the top which I have to take off. Those are stickers that identify like which piece is which. This is like a home assembly piece. But I wanted to show you the inside. So what's nice about this one is that it has two doors and you just pull them open. And the other nice thing about it is that it holds a full size litter box. So in this case, I can fit this high sided litter box in this unit and I'm thrilled about that because it definitely helps cut down on the amount of litter that the cats kind of get all over the inside of this unit. You could see there's some litter here um, in the front of the unit but they've been using it for about a week so that's not too bad as far as litter there. And I do have a litter scoop here tucked behind the litter box so when I want to scoop it all I have to do is like turn this around, scoop the litter, push it back, put the litter scoop in there, and we're good to go. Now, this unit does come with an optional partition that goes like right here where my hand is. The problem is if you put the partition in, then you have to use a smaller litter box because you're not gonna be able to fit this size litter box in with the partition in. Um, but it does have the option where you don't have to use the partition, so I'm not using the partition. And I guess they have the partition to kind of keep litter contained versus being tracked out but if you have cats and cat litter you know it's going to get tracked out anyway so uh this is really sturdy also whenever you purchase something like this online you never know how sturdy it's going to be this is a really nice sturdy piece 
And then on this side here is the door and you could see it's a nice big opening and you could put this door on either side. So you could put it on this side or you could put it on the other side and um, depending on like what your layout is. So I have it on this side and I have this green grass mat in front of it. So with the other one, I could easily slide this green grass mat underneath it and slide it out. But with this one, I could slide it underneath and then this one actually sits on top of the grass mat. So it actually helps to hold the grass mat in place, which is really nice. And this is the amount of litter that got kicked out of the litter box over the course of probably three or four days since I vacuumed and I definitely need to clean it up but I just wanted to show like a real life example of like what it looks like. So here's the old unit on the left next to the new unit on the right and the old piece was 20 inches wide by 20 inches deep and the new piece is 30 inches wide by 21 inches deep. So it's about 10 inches wider than the old one and it's one inch deeper. Um, the old one is like two inches taller, but that is not an issue. And the other one has a square opening, whereas this one has like this arched opening. And on the old one, the front door opens. And as I mentioned, it can only hold a smaller litter box. And you see all of the litter that gets kicked out of the litter box. And there's plenty of litter in the back also. So... Yeah, this one is a lot messier than the new one because I can't fit a high-sided litter box in here. But this one has been in use for years, so it's definitely served its purpose. And I'm still going to keep it. I'm going to move it to another room. I do like having the litter boxes enclosed. The other thing with this black furniture is I don't know how much it's going to show up on camera, but there's like dust. Like it gets dusty. And even the inside, so what I have to do is I have to take this out, clean out the whole inside, like wipe it down and wipe out the outside because you could really see a lot of dust and once again i wanted to show you what it looks like like a real life situation so the one on the left has been in boo's room before it's been in his room out of his room in his room out of his room it's going to go back in his room and so for that i do like that it's a smaller size but because i did have a little bit more room here um, i thought it would be nice to get this one it's a little bit wider and i really like the fact that it's white because my china cabinet is white and I have two other pieces of white furniture in the dining room so I thought it would match better. So once a week I have to put a large cooler outside for my farm share delivery. Every week I get a delivery of fresh organic fruits and vegetables from a local farm and that starts in the beginning of June and it goes all the way through Thanksgiving which is the end of November. And uh, another reason why I like this unit is because it perfectly fits the cooler on top. And I have to put the cooler here the night before, so I remember to put it out the day of the delivery. And then once the items are delivered, it gives me some place to put the cooler uh, until I can empty it out and like go through all the fruits and vegetables and prep them and put them in the fridge. So this serves a double purpose with regards to that. So I'm really happy with this unit. And if you'd like more information about it, if you'd like to check it out, I'll put a link to it on Amazon in the description below this video, and I'll also put it as a pinned comment. You could also just go to our Amazon shop, which is at amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Lucky Ferals. And if you purchase it there, we do get a little commission on it, and you'll be able to find it in the cat furniture section of our shop. It's 3 p.m. and I have a visitor. I was just looking out the window and I saw this one walk over from the woods. It's a very young deer. It is almost 10 a.m. And I'm downstairs with the kittens. I'm just about to brush them and give them their breakfast. Here's Richard. Here's Sammy. 
Um, so these are the four that let me brush them now. Nancy, Ziggy, Richard, and Sammy. The other ones still don't, but I'm still working on it. The reason why I'm down here with the camera is because I want to talk about something. And it's something that I just found out yesterday. So over the past few months, I found out that uh, my neighbor's cat went missing. It still has not come back. And my neighbor also caught someone trying to take his other cat. He found that out by looking at his security camera and then he called his neighbor and told the neighbor to go outside and make sure the cat was okay. So the neighbor went out and you know made sure the cat was not taken. And then I have stopped two people from taking my neighbor's dog. And my neighbor's dog is a golden lab, uh, but it's an older dog. And sometimes, you know, it wanders around in their front yard or a next door neighbor's yard. But, you know, the people that live here know the dog and they know like the neighbors that the dog belongs to and they know where it lives. So um, there should not be an issue with it. So I literally stopped people from putting that dog in their car. And something like that has never happened in all of the years that I've lived here. Here's little Eva and that is a toy. So yesterday I found out that the woman who lives on the other end of the block and who's been taking care of the feral cats down there and feeding them and getting them spayed and neutered, she's missing about four or five cats that she takes care of. She said she's down to one cat and she's been hearing a similar thing from people that live in nearby neighborhoods and then yesterday i was on a message board and people from the nearby neighborhoods were posting about how they're all missing cats and these are not just like individual people missing cats these are all from people that take care of feral cats um, there's quite a few people that you know feed them take care of like small colonies around here and those are the people that are all saying that they're missing cats. So something in this area is going on with regards to cats. Um, I don't know if people are trying to take the cats. Like I witnessed people trying to take my neighbor's dog and someone trying to take my neighbor's cat. Or if there is a predator in the area. I do know there are coyotes uh, like a town or two over. Um, but they've never been in um, like this neighborhood. This neighborhood has always been very, very safe for the cats. Right now we have five cats here. So it's ending up to be a mystery as to what is going on with all of the cats. But it does make me very thankful that I have these guys indoors and they're not outdoors. So I think the fact that Sammy escaped from the trap and then made all these cats house cats um, ended up being really really good for them because right now the majority of them would probably be missing they would just have gone missing like all of the other cats that have been reported as having gone missing and we're talking about probably 60 to 80 percent of the local cat population um, so that is not a good thing and I should also mention that the neighbor has contacted like the local animal shelters and animal control to see if there was like an increase or an influx of cats coming in. And they said that nothing unusual um, has been taking place. They have not been getting a lot more cats than usual. So it's not like someone's been trapping them and bringing them into animal control or the shelter. Um, it's really a mystery as to um, where the cats are going and what's happening to them. And here's Sammy. Sammy says it's horrifying. It's horrifying to hear that. Yeah, Sammy, but look what you did. Now all the cats are safe here. All seven of you guys are safe because you escaped from the trap. Right, Sammy? So sometimes things happen for a reason and it's better to just kind of go with the flow than to fight the situation. I had absolutely no plans of having 11 cats in this house. But because I have 11 cats in this house, I am pretty sure that it has saved quite a few of their lives because of the situation that's going on with all of these missing cats outside.
Now, a best case scenario would be that someone is rescuing these cats and providing them a good home. But we're talking a lot of cats, not just this neighborhood, but if you add all of the surrounding neighborhoods, we're talking a lot of cats. So hopefully it's not like a hoarding situation where someone's just picking up all these cats and then there's going to be like 50 cats found in a house. But um, yeah, it's a mystery. And of course, it is very easy to think the worst that maybe people are uh, taking these cats and using them as sacrifices or maybe they're taking the cats and feeding them to like dog fights or maybe they're taking the cats and even eating them. I mean, that's that's a consideration. So when I was growing up, one of the local restaurants got shut down because it was found out that they were using cats like they were serving cats as meat. So it's really, really nasty to think about, but you have to remember that in some cultures in this world, they do eat cats and dogs and yeah, it's horrible. So there's a variety of things that can be happening with the cats outside. Many are horrific to think about and some are, you know, best case scenario, maybe the cats are finding homes and maybe someone is rescuing them but the worst thing is that nobody knows what's going on and I did check my security camera footage last night to see what's been going on in my yard at night and over the past two weeks it's only been two cats it's been uh, my neighbor's cat the one with the collar um, whose other cat is missing and then either Bob or Baxter I can't tell those two apart but one of them is missing and the two weeks prior to that there was a black cat that was coming around um, I haven't seen that one recently, and um, so I think it was just those three that I've seen over the past month. There might be another tabby on the camera, in which case we could say there used to be like four cats, and now it's down to two, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on the security camera footage, and I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open as to what's been going on with the cats. I just wanted to talk about this because it is an issue with outside cats especially when there's been a change in the population of a neighborhood. So in a recent video, I mentioned how so many of my neighbors are new because there's been a lot of change around here with people selling their house and moving out and then new people moving in. And I'm sure it's not just my immediate neighbors, but also other people in the neighborhood. And you don't really know what kind of people uh, something like that brings in. So uh, it definitely can be very concerning. And there has also been a local issue with transient populations. Let's just call it that. People who are here under less than ideal circumstances who do not have homes or resources or anything like that. So um, that has been an issue. It's been an issue at local shopping malls. It's been an issue in local parking lots. Um, it's been an issue in local neighborhoods, so that is also a factor that potentially could be at play here with uh, the cats going missing. So I just wanted to make this video and talk about this because in all of the years that I've been living here, nothing like this has been going on before, and I hope it's figured out soon as far as what's going on with all of these cats and potentially also dogs, and I hope um, it's nothing sinister. Um, or really horrible and I want to think positively about it but it is a reality and uh, I think it is good to uh, kind of discuss it and put the information out there so uh, if you're dealing with feral cats if you're dealing with outside cats uh, maybe take a little extra precaution uh, maybe put up an extra security camera or two or maybe even try to have some extra people keep some extra eyes on the cats. So uh, that's the situation. It's 10.25 a.m. and this is how the cats have been getting fed lately. So what I'll do is I'll put the platter with the plates down and then I spread them out a little bit. And I've been doing this probably about a week now and what I find so interesting is that the cats have their favorite spots, just like the upstairs cats. When I feed them on the play rug, like they all have their spot and they like to eat in the same like location with regards to like where they each are. So whenever I do this, Nancy always eats on the platter. Sammy sometimes eats on the platter, sometimes she eats near the platter. Richard is always here. Eva's always here. 
Goldie is usually here, but sometimes she'll walk around for us to figure that out. And then Ringo and Ziggy are always here. So it's like they have their favorite spots where they eat their food. And it's kind of like how humans usually have their spot at the table. Like when I was growing up, we always had, okay, you sit here, you sit here. Like you had your seat at the table, like you know where you sat. And with cats, I'm finding that it's the same thing. It's like they all have their seat at the table or on the floor and they know where they like to eat. And it never really changes. They never really mix it up. They're like, okay, well, this is my spot. So it just goes to show you how smart cats are. And Ringo eats all of his and then he tries to eat other people's. Which I don't mind because Ringo is the largest cat so he needs more calories than the other ones. And Ziggy is the smallest cat and right now he's eating off of Ziggy's plate. You're okay, Ringo. I'm just trying to keep you from Ziggy's plate. If she wants to eat it, let her eat it, and then you could eat everyone else's leftovers, okay? If Ziggy wants to eat, let her eat. You could eat the leftovers, okay? There's Goldie. She's like, what's going on? What's going on here? Nancy left over some food. Nancy gave you some food. Here, Nancy says you could eat her food, okay? You eat, you eat Nancy's food, okay? It's 5 p.m. Nancy's taking a nap. Look how she sleeps. Look at her front paws. She must be dreaming. It's 6.45 a.m. and look at Boo. He's laying in the cat at track. He's using it as a cat bed and a pillow. I've never seen him do this before. It's so funny. I've seen like Simba do this, even Stella, but I've never seen Boo do this. So last night we got a lot of rain and I had to shut all the windows and that's why Boo's probably here because he's normally near the window in his room. But he looks so comfortable. He doesn't even want to get up. Oh, here comes Simba. Hey Simba. It's 4.30 p.m. I don't know what Sammy is doing. She's under this rug like it's a blanket. There's little Eva on the stairs. What are you doing, Sammy? I have this colored green stem. I thought the cats might like to play with it. Wanna nibble on it, or you want to play with it?
Cats like leafy greens, and collard greens are a member of the cruciferous family. Just because she's chewing on it doesn't mean she's going to eat it. Remember, cats are obligate carnivores. So I don't think a green like this, they really care for it. They love cat grass. They love catnip. They love the softer greens that are easier for them to consume. This one is tougher. But I thought they'd like to play with it because, you know, they like playing with green beans and snow peas. They actually like to play with green vegetables. Let me just give it to you. No? If I move it, then she's interested. It is 10.30 p.m. and I'm down here with all the kittens and here's Goldie, little Eva, and Ringo's there. And let me tell you what just happened. So I have a can of food here and I was giving them a snack and I was feeding them the food on this spoon. It's like this plastic baby spoon, right? So I put the food on the spoon and I hold it up here and here goes little Eva. And Eva's been eating it like crazy. So she really loves this food or else she's super hungry. But they all had dinner. They all had chunky beef for dinner. Okay, so let me tell you what kind of progress little Eva just made. So she was eating it from the spoon and I said, I wonder what would happen if I just picked up a piece and put it in my hand. Look at this. Tonight was the first night ever, first time ever, that she ever ate anything out of my hand. Maybe now she'll eat the snacks out of my hand also. She's eating this wet food out of my hand. This is exactly how I feed them treats. And she never eats treats out of my hand. She always runs away. But look, she's doing it no problem right now. It's because she loves this food. So when training cats, it's really, really important to keep trying different things because you never know what's going to get through to them. Sometimes you get lucky, like with Sammy, she just fell in love with cooked chicken. And with little Eva, it took this canned food. Like, who would think? So actually what I might do is go grab some uh, treats and see if she'll eat a treat out of my hand now. She's, she might still be afraid. 
and there's Ringo. See Ringo? He hangs back and he watches from the outskirts. He's like a protective father. Okay, here we go. I put a few temptations in here. Let's see, is she going to eat a temptation? See, she didn't eat it. Goldie ate it. Let's see if she'll eat it now. Let's see. Here you go. Oh, she dropped it. Ziggy will get it. Ziggy, let, don't eat out of the can. Okay, so Eva just walked away. Eva, you want more wet food? Meanwhile, I'm being ambushed by everybody else. Get out, get out the way, everybody, here. Don't eat out of the can. Here. 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 Don't eat out of the can. Here. Here, Richard. Ringo. Yeah. Who wants this? Don't eat out of the can. Sammy. Get out the can. Okay, I think little Eva had enough. She walked off, but she ate a lot. She ate a lot out of my hands. Okay, move. I'm going to take everything out of the can. So anyway... I just wanted to document this because it was a first for little Eva. She never ate out of my hand before. She was the only one. Even Ringo will eat snacks out of my hand sometimes, about half the time. Um, so, yeah, this was huge for her. This was uh, definitely big progress. So the question that I have is which cat is going to be the next cat to allow me to give them lots of pets? Will it be Goldie? Here's Goldie right now. Will it be Ringo? There's Ringo. Or will it be little Eva? She's off in the back. It is 10.20 a.m. And I just came downstairs to get the cats ready for their day or the kittens. And we start by brushing. Everyone gets brushed. Who will let me brush them? And I'm really curious today to see what is going to happen with little Eva? Because last night was the first night that little Eva ate something out of my hand. Okay, Richard. He's licking my hand. Richard is the licker of the bunch. So right now, four cats let me brush them. Sammy, Richard, Nancy, and Ziggy. What is going on? So the three that I can't brush yet are Goldie, Ringo, and Little Eva. Now it's time for treats. Who wants a treat? One treat? Goldie loves treats. Hey, Goldie. Okay, where's Eva? Nancy, Eva, Ringo. There you go, Nancy. Sammy, you want another one? Here's Ziggy, she waits so patiently. Eat that, Ziggy. Good morning, Nancy. How are you today? Let's open the back door so you guys can look out. Hello, Sammy. How are you today? So today it is a rainy and gray day. We have gotten so much rain this summer. We really need some good sunshiny days. Hello, Ziggy. Let's go downstairs and see what's going on, guys. Let's go. 
Here are their dinner plates from last night. They had some of the locally purchased raw food that I mix supplements into. And then later at night they had some canned food as a snack. We, are, we had some playtime last night. Hello Goldie, good morning. Hello little Eva, good morning. Hello Richard, they love this toy. The reason why I am downstairs right now is to put their toys on because what I do is I give them some play time before it's time for their breakfast and I have to feed the upstairs cats first. Ringo is in a cat tower in the back. It's dark back there so I'm not gonna um, put the camera back there but today is a very special day for you guys. Today is exactly one year after the day that they showed up in my yard. And I was just watching the video from a year ago and I can't believe how much bigger the cats have gotten. Like they're all pretty much fully grown now. There might be a little bit more growing for some of them, but they were so much smaller a year ago. And I think they were only like five or six months old, which is a little bit younger than my initial estimates, but it's, it's close. I thought maybe they're around seven months old, but they could have been five or six. Hey guys, so the routine right now is that I come down and I put their toys on, and this toy looks like it's been on all night. This is a smart toy. This is the Whack-A-Mole smart toy. Now they've chewed all the feathers off of the little toy, so I have to replace the little toy. I have to figure out where I put those replacements. But this is a smart toy, so it'll shut itself off, and then when a cat goes near it, it puts itself back on. So the routine is that I come down here, I put their interactive toys on, then I go upstairs and I take care of the older cats, and then I come back down here and I brush these cats, and then I give them a like a treat just for uh, some treat training, and then they have their breakfast, and that's been working out. Richard looks so tired. Did you get good sleep, Richard? Okay, let's put this on. Okay. There you go. There you guys go. Hey, Ziggy. Ziggy loves to meow at me whenever I give her pets or brushes. That's the first thing she does. She meows. Right? You're such a nice girl, Ziggy. You're such a nice girl. Then I put this one on. And then I put this one on, but this one needs new batteries. It's a short while later, and now the cats are getting brushed. And today, I can brush four of the cats. So I can brush Ziggy, Richard, Sammy, and Nancy. Goldie is running around. She has the zoomies. Ziggy's smelling Richard's butt. And so... The cats have come a very, very long way in the past year. Look at that. Oh my God. They just head butted each other at full running speed. Come here, Goldie. Goldie still doesn't let me brush her or pet her. Ziggy does, Ziggy loves it. Ziggy loves it. You wanna lay on the box and be brushed? Hey, Sammy. Sammy wants to be brushed. Ziggy lets me brush her belly. She only started to let me pet and brush her a little over a week ago. You guys, it's been a year. It's been a year since you've been in the yard. A whole year, Sammy. You were so little, Sammy. You weren't even grown into your ears yet. You had big, giant ears, Sammy. Sammy, you had big, giant ears. You were goofy looking. 
And Richard was so tiny. He was little Richard. Now he's big Richard. Now Richard's one of the big cats, right? Richard, you were the little one. Now you're one of the big ones. There's little Eva. She's hanging out by this window. How you doing, little Eva? You okay? So there is a very convenient cat shelf built into every window down here. It's the perfect size for cats. So it's almost like this house was built for cats because outside there is the alcove underneath the house where I have the custom cat shelter. And that's right near the patio. And then down here, there are all of these cat shelves by the windows. See, there goes Sammy. So now it's time for some treats. I have some cat treats in this container. And I feed them to the cats by hand. Who wants one? Want one, Sammy? All the cats are eating their breakfast. They're having homemade raw food for breakfast, and this is how they've been eating now. So I split them up so they're not all eating on the platter. Except for Nancy and Sammy, they always want to eat on the platter together. I think it's like an alpha thing with them. And Ringo always eats over here, and Ziggy always eats over here. And Richard always eats over here. And then we have Goldie and Eva, who sometimes eat here, and then they sometimes eat here. And what I've been doing the past few days is when I portion out the food, if there's any left over, I give it to Ringo because he's the largest cat. So he has a greater uh, calorie requirement than the smaller cats. And then I also give some to Richard because Richard's been having some growth spurts and he's still growing. And the larger cats need more calories than the smaller cats. So that's been working out really good to keep like Ringo from eating other people's food and to keep Richard from eating other people's food. So instead of just giving everyone the same exact portion um, with regards to this set of cats, because there is such a big difference in their size, um, I do um, vary the portions depending on the size of the cat. So right now it appears that Ziggy is the smallest cat and then Sammy would be the next smallest and then Nancy's just a little bit bigger than Sammy and then it would probably be little Eva and then maybe Richard and then Goldie and then Ringo. Ringo's definitely the largest, Ziggy's definitely the smallest. Sammy and Nancy are smaller cats and Richard's still growing, and Ziggy is, I mean, she's very fluffy. Um, her fur is much fluffier than Ziggy's fur, um, and she is quite a bit bigger than Ziggy. And then little Eva has been growing also, so she might also have some more growth spurts in her as well as Richard. So she's been getting a good amount of food too. But she's not as active as Richard, so that's another thing that I have to like weigh in as far as how much food that they're getting. Um, because Little Eve is probably the least active cat. Her and Goldie are probably the least active, although recently Goldie's been running around the house. So, um, you know, we'll see. As far as activity levels, I think Ziggy, Nancy, Sammy... Um, those three are definitely the most active and then followed by like Richard and Ringo's not too active but he's you know I don't know I need to spend more time with them to really um, better observe them but you can see he's still eating some of the other cats have finished and he's still working on his plate which is good he's he used to always like finish his plate right away and then um, steal other people's food but as long as the other cats have time to eat what they want, then I don't mind him like finishing leftovers. Like if he goes to Nancy's leftovers there. Good job, Ringo. Did you like your food? Did you like your breakfast? It's about 1.20 p.m. right now, and here's Sammy. 
and this has become an everyday occurrence usually sometime in the afternoon when I sit down to work on my computer Sammy will come over to me she'll jump in the chair next to me and she wants a ton of pets and then she'll sit in my lap and when she sits in my lap she feels exactly like Ditto used to feel like she has the same energy as Ditto if that makes any sense just calm and very happy and relaxed she goes into like this really relaxed vibe it's about 3 p.m. and I just watched this dear family walk out of the woods and then a big black SUV stopped about 20 feet away from them and I was watching the SUV and I was like what are they gonna do it ended up they were just taking photos or filming some video which is fine I've been noticing that quite a lot recently I'll see people like walking down the street and then they'll see some wildlife around here and then they stop and they take their phone out and they start filming or taking photos Sometimes I forget that people don't see the same amount of wildlife that I do on a daily basis. The other day I was cutting open a watermelon. That's Sammy. You gonna join me, Sammy? Okay. She's looking out the window also. Here's Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? So what I was saying is, the other day I cut into a watermelon and it wasn't ripe enough for me to eat it. Um, and I was like, you know, it seems like a shame to throw out this watermelon. I wonder if someone would eat it if I put it across the street in the woods and it was not a large one it was more like a smaller one so that's what I did I cut it into pieces and I put it on a tray and I took it across the street and I dumped it in the woods only a few feet into the woods because um, you know I didn't want people seeing like a big pile of red watermelon or it actually wasn't very bright red it was kind of like a almost like a pink, but it wasn't supposed to be a pink watermelon, it was supposed to be a red one. Anyway, so I put it in the woods, and then I kept an eye on it, and within 24 hours, it was completely gone. So overnight, it was consumed by someone, I don't know who. I don't know if the deer ate it, because I did read that deer do like watermelon. Um, I don't know if raccoons ate it, like, I don't know what happened, but their rinds were not even left. So whoever ate it, ate the watermelon rinds and everything, so... That's what I've been doing now. Whenever I have produce and um, like whatever, if it's a decent amount left over that I would normally um, like toss in the garbage, I'll actually put it on a tray and take it to the woods. And someone usually eats it. Right, Sammy? Sammy has been getting lots and lots of pets this afternoon. How you doing, Sammy? I just opened the window because this morning what happened was I was woken up by the sound of heavy machinery and I was like, what is going on? So I got out of bed and I looked and it ends up that the town was trimming trees. So around the edge of my property, I have three trees that belong to the town and they were trimming them. So they were trimming all of the lower branches off. They're making a lot of noise. They had like a massive truck here and like all kinds of chainsaws and everything. And the cats were freaked out. 
so I made sure that I shut all the windows and I put the air conditioning on so they it might like drown out the outside noise then I just realized that I forgot to open these windows over here the other windows in the house are open but these have been closed hello Sammy Here's the tree that they trimmed. See how nice the bottom looks now? It's nice and like even and you can easily walk under the tree now. There's no branches hanging down or anything. They even shaped it a bit. They took some uh, of the branches off of the sides and stuff. So it looks really nice. Look how weird this is. So this is the kitchen scale that I use to measure out the raw food for the cats. Well, yesterday, it was really dirty. I was making homemade raw food for the cats. It was just like full of like raw chicken. So I said, let me just wash it and, you know, clean it up. Well, it messed it up and it wasn't working for a while. So I set it aside and, you know, usually after a while, it'll, it'll kind of dry itself out. So I just checked on it and it's working again. Like I can turn it on, but I want to show you what's going on inside. Do you see that? There is a water paw print inside of this display. Do you see the paw print? What are the chances that the water and condensation inside of this kitchen scale are going to form like a perfect paw print? That is crazy weird. It is almost 11 p.m. and I just put out these new two meal feeders for the cats. So there's one up here with Splash, and then there's one for Stella, one for Simba, one for Boo. They're really cute. They're kind of like a bento box for cats, if that makes any sense, but they're like these two meal feeders. They each take one AA battery, and they're easy to fill, so I put like one teaspoon of crunchies in each section. And I set it to go off um, within an hour from now and then another feed to go off about six hours from now. So it'll go off probably around five o'clock in the morning. And You could see Splash is sitting next to one over there. Like he might be able to smell the crunchies th through it. But um, yeah, the cats are probably going to sit by these boxes most of the night and hopefully, I'm hoping that the timers on them actually work because I don't hear like any ticking I don't hear any noise or anything so I'm hoping that these work and we'll see what happens um, the one thing that is not so great about them is because they're not digital so they're not going to be as precise as if these were all set digitally then you know I can make sure that they're all set to the same time and they're all set to the same minute to like open up. So because these are just like these dials and they're not like a super precise timer dial, I'm hoping that they open relatively, um, you know, within a few minutes of each other. I don't think they're all going to open at the same time again because it's not a really precise dial if there was only one cat involved it would be fine whenever it opens it opens but when you're trying to coordinate like four of these at the same time i don't think they're going to be opening at the same time i mean i'll be lucky if they open within a few minutes of each other so uh we'll see what happens and um yeah hopefully they will work here's what they look like there's a compartment on the right and a compartment on the left there's two compartments this top piece flips open when the two arrows align on the uh, timer section so with this timer i have it set for one hour and then this timer is set for about six hours so yeah we'll see what happens it's an hour later and look what happened all of the feeders opened so here's an open feeder you can see boo's eating from an open feeder there's another open feeder 
there's the open feeder and let me tell you the problem so the problem with these feeders is that there is no noise at all i was in the next room working on my computer there's no noise in the house at all because i'm listening for these feeders to pop open i did not even hear them pop open so i did not see any of the cats go running to the feeders and my money if i had to bet it would be that boo ate the food out of every one of these feeders because he's the only one here gorging on the crunchies that were in them good thing it was only a little bit of crunchies Simba's in a cat tower in the other room where I was. I have no idea where Stella and Splash are, but I'm gonna look at the security camera footage to see if Boo ate all of the crunchies out of all of these feeders, but I am super happy that they actually work. Good boy, Boo, you did really good. So I just watched the security camera footage and it ends up Boo uh, really only got uh, that feeder from what I could see. So Stella was laying here on the rug and you know she's really smart. So she was waiting for something to happen with the feeders. And so she was laying there and then this feeder here opened. So she just casually walked over to the feeder and then ate what was in here. And then I really couldn't see um, who had that feeder um, the one that Splash was sitting next to, but it looked like Splash ate from it or possibly Splash and Stella ate from it. And then when this one opened, Stella walked over to this one. So it looks like Stella got that one also. And then Boo came in and got that one. So to me, it looks like Stella got two or possibly three of them. Splash might have gotten one and Boo got one. So uh, Stella is the smart one. So now the way these feeders work is they stay popped open like that and then in like you know another five hours the other part will pop open and then there'll be two open um, compartments. So I'm just gonna let them stay like this and we'll see what happens. Um, they're set to go off overnight so I'm hoping that it'll keep the cats from waking me up and they're super super quiet. And now I'm, I'm debating whether I um, put seven of these together for the downstairs cats. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight or I'm just going to wait till tomorrow. I might. I think I'm just going to wait till tomorrow because it's already getting late. It's almost midnight and I'm really tired. Stella, did you like the crunchies? Stella says she really enjoyed them. I'm happy you like them, Stella. It's almost midnight and here's Nancy. Here's Richard. Hey, Richard. Nancy's been crying by the door, so I just came down here to give them a snack. So I haven't spent any time down here um, with this group of cats tonight because I went out for a while. And then I just got back and I was setting up the feeders upstairs and doing some stuff online. So I'm coming down now to give them a little bit of a snack and get them ready for their night. What are you doing? So I scooped their litter before I left around, I don't know, like 7.30, I guess. And... I refresh their water or I might still need to do that um, you can see there's a whole bunch of empty plates on their platter so tonight was chunky raw beef night and they enjoyed that oh I know what I forgot so one of the things that I did this evening on my way home was stop in a local supermarket a few towns over uh, because I know that they sell the beech nut baby food that uh, the cats really like as a treat. And I feed it to them um, on the little baby spoons. And I specifically bought that to try to get through to Goldie, Eva, and Ringo. Because, you know, we've been make because I made a lot of progress with Ziggy and now I could pet her and she loves it. I still need to make progress with the others and... One of Goldie's favorite foods is baby food, so I have to go back upstairs and get that. Okay, so there's little Eva. 
I do this over the plates so whatever falls down they can eat off the plates and there's Goldie. So it was only a week or two ago that little Eva would not even do this. Like she would never eat anything out of a spoon out of my hand. So she's come a long way. Look what's going on with Goldie and Ringo. Okay, Goldie, you want some? This is Goldie's favorite. She loves any kind of baby food or squeeze-ups. I actually think the turkey one is her favorite, but this is chicken. Goldie, don't you want more? Goldie, don't you want more? Come here, Goldie, come on. Here, Eva. So this is really more of a training session for Eva, Goldie, and Ringo than anything. I'm letting Sammy have some because she's here. Here, guys, come on. Who wants this? Ringo, don't you want some? What's the matter, Ringo? You don't want any? You're tired? Okay, good job, Goldie. I have more for you. Here you go. Here's more. Who wants some more? Who wants some more? Nobody wants any more? It's 8.45 a.m. and look at what's going on here. So all of the feeders are open and Stella and Boo are just like sitting in the middle of all of them. Stella has not been here all morning. She was on my bed for a while. But it's just so funny. I'm really happy the feeders worked and I'll definitely have to check out the security camera to see what happened at 5 a.m. when they all went off. I was just making a list of everything that I need to do today because tomorrow I'm leaving on an overnight trip and I want to make sure that the cats are all set up. And actually now that I say that I'm wondering if I should leave tonight and get them all set up tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I'll either leave tomorrow morning or tonight. Hey, boo. So I've picked up the feeders and I put them up here on this TV unit just to get them off the floor for now. And I'm glad to know that these feeders work, but there is a big downside to using these feeders. And that is that the cats lose their appetite for the regular meal. So they had these two very small snacks overnight. Um, they were only a teaspoon of crunchies in each segment. And then Simba did not want to finish his breakfast and Stella did not want to finish her breakfast. So um, I do believe that's a side effect of giving them these feeders overnight. And here's Splash and Splash wants to eat everyone's leftovers. Here's what's left on Stella and Simba's plate. So I now have to pick these up and then I'm just gonna give them to the kittens downstairs. Um, the kittens did not have any automatic feeders overnight, so they didn't have any snacks, so they should be good and hungry for their breakfast. And if I just leave these on the floor, then Splash is going to eat them, and he does not need to be eating twice his portions. It is 6.45 p.m., and I just looked outside and I saw this. So a car is stopping to take photos of the deer, and there are three babies today. I've only ever seen two babies together. But there's three babies with what looks like the mother deer. There's the three babies. I thought deer only had one or two babies at a time. I didn't know that they could have more than that. I'm keeping an eye on the car in case they do something stupid.
The reason why is because the people that live around here don't do that. Like, the only people that stop and look like that and take photos are the people that don't live around here. Because everyone who lives around here probably does what I'm doing right now. Which is just watching from their windows. So there are, there's the deer family. I'm here with Simba, Boo, and Stella, and it is mail time for the cats. The cats got some mail, so let's see what they got. It looks like there's a card here. That's very pretty. Thank you very, very much for your generous donation. This says, just wanted to send you a little something to show my appreciation for all that you do. You take me to a place of genuine kindness and selflessness to give to others. In your case, the little furry babies. You show so much compassion and love. It takes me away from my everyday life of difficult and exhausting struggles and reminds me there is always room for kindness and compassion. You are an inspiration. Found your channel looking for help and guidance with trapping a feral mama kitty. My friend needed help with trapping her and her kittens. We got her and kittens. That is awesome. She now lives inside with three of her kittens, now cats. That is excellent. Thank you for sharing a small part of your life with the furry babies. Love, Summer Page. Thank you so much, Summer, for this very, very lovely card. And thank you for your very generous donation that will be put to good use toward cat supplies for the month. Welcome to the channel. We hope you've been enjoying the videos and we are so happy to hear about the cats that were rescued. That is amazing. And look what we have here. It says we plant a tree for each product sold. And isn't this pretty? It's a paper bouquet. Let's check it out. Okay, it says to open, use both hands and pinch edges of ribbons together. Isn't that cute? And look, Simba's going to check it out. Simba wants to smell the flowers. Simba probably wants to eat the greenery. Oh, that's nice, Simba. Simba says thank you so much. He says he's going to enjoy looking at this. He's a little disappointed that he can't eat it, though. That's really pretty. I'm going to put that on my mantle and that will brighten up the room. Thank you once again, Summer. We hope you've been having a really nice summer. That's Boo in the background playing with the toy. And now we have a package from Sharon. Let's see what she sent to the cats. Oh, I think I know what this is. This is really exciting. This is Hi LF, hope all is well. My cousin asked me to make a small flat bag that she could pack away in her suitcase. So I made some for you. They can be used for anything. I also added a few more things. Hugs and purrs, Sharon. Sunday says hi to all of the cats. Well, all of the cats say hi to Sunday. Thanks so much, Sharon, for sending us this package of goodies. It looks like the cats got some new toys. These are like braids. They're like little ropes for the cats to play with. They've been really enjoying the kicker toys with the fringe on them. Nancy was going crazy over that the other day. So it'll be interesting to see how they like these. Thank you so much. And then here we have some more of the mats for the downstairs cat tower. The mats that I currently have have been in use every single day. I actually vacuumed them earlier today. And now I have some fresh mats that I could put on there and put the other ones in the laundry. Thank you so much. Isn't this cute? Look at this fabric. Look how cute this fabric is with all these different color cats. Oh, and here goes Simba. Here's Simba, he's testing out this new blanket. So what this piece is, is a vomit blanket. And Simba is probably 
the reason why I asked Sharon to make a vomit blanket for the cats. So what has been going on this summer is that there has been a lot of vomiting on my bed and then I'll walk in the room and I'll see it and unfortunately it goes through every layer of bedding on the bed. So in the winter if they vomit on the bed I have like a really thick comforter and sometimes it'll only, you know, be absorbed by the comforter and I don't have to take everything off the bed and, you know, put everything in the laundry. But in the summer, I only use like a lighter blanket or a lighter quilt. And if someone vomits on the bed, it goes through everything. And I got so tired of having to strip everything off the bed and put it in the laundry that I asked Sharon if she was able to come up with some kind of like waterproof or water resistant uh, blanket that I could put on the bed. Now I did try the training pads. I tried to put those on the bed, but the problem is that no one will lay on them. I even tried putting them under like the smaller quilts that Sharon has made. The cats literally kicked them off the bed. They pulled them off the bed and they laid on the bed like they didn't want anything to do with them but i think the fact that simba already laid on this is a really good sign that this um, will be welcoming for the cats this is a new duvet cover that i recently got at ikea and i really liked it because it reminds me of herbs it looks like it has like herbs growing all over it or wildflowers and I just really, really like that vibe right now. So the fact that Sharon just sent a blanket that is white on one side and green on the other side is like a perfect match for this. And she had absolutely no idea. So look how perfectly it fits on the bed. It is an absolute perfect fit. And um, it basically covers the entire area that the cats normally lay on. And I could even put their smaller quilts here on the edge if I want to, but it's just a perfect fit for the top of the bed. So thank you so much, Sharon. So I had requested white or some kind of solid pastel color because that way I can easily see anything that they do on it, especially white. Um, if there's any bleeding like that time with Boo, it's really, really apparent. Or um, if there's any vomit at all, even a little tiny bit, like you see it right away. Whereas something like this with the pattern on it, which I really like. I like things um, that are colorful and, you know, have a design to them. This is much harder to see stuff on it because sometimes it can blend in. But with a solid color, even with something like this green, it makes it so much easier to see if the cats are like spitting something up or bleeding or anything. So I just put this on the bed and we'll see how well the cats like it. Here's Simba on the blanket. So this blanket is supposed to have like a water resistant layer in between. Um, like the top and the bottom and it's supposed to stop vomit from going through every layer of bedding so hopefully that will be the case they have stopped vomiting as much as they were previously um, especially Simba because I have figured out what was causing his vomiting and I'm going to be doing a video about that um, coming up soon um, but for now we're really really happy to have this vomit blanket right Simba we are so happy. Even if it keeps the vomit from going through only a few layers of bedding, we would be super, super happy. Right, Simba? Thank you so much, Sharon. Say thank you so much, Sharon, and Sunday. Well, I'm glad that Simba likes it because if he didn't like it, he would be pawing at it and he would not be laying like this on it. Good job, Simba. He's even purring. Good job, Simba. Good job. Now, if you're going to vomit, vomit on this, okay? Vomit on this part of the bed, okay? Here are these beautiful cat tower mats for the cat tower downstairs with all these lovely, colorful cats. Oh, and look at this, and we have another set here. Look at these cats. Look how cute these cats are. They're so funny. I don't know where Sharon gets all of this amazing fabric from. Oh, and what do we have here? So here is, it's a bag. It's flat. That's really nice. And then I guess with these, you could also hang it up. 
or clip it to something. That's really pretty. I really like that fabric. Oh, and look at this, look. It's Hello Kitty. I have a friend who goes crazy over anything that's Hello Kitty. I might put this away for a Christmas present. This is so cute. Look at that, isn't that nice? Thank you very much, Sharon. Oh, and here's some more. This one is really nice with the purple swirls. And here's another Hello Kitty, look at that. This is so cute. And then here's another bag. This is cute, it's kind of like a retro design on it. And then here's another bag with the flowers on it. Thank you so much, Sharon and Sunday, for these amazing goodies. I'm definitely looking forward to using everything here. I am thrilled with the blanket for the bed. Hopefully it's going to save me so much time doing laundry. And we hope you're doing well. We hope you've been enjoying your summer. And we hope everything is going well where you are. Thanks again. It's about 10 p.m. right now. I just got back from Target and I bought the cats these Smarty Cat Flicker Balls. The reason why I bought these is because I thought maybe they would fit in one of the Turbo Scratchers. Hey Goldie, can you smell that? So I'm gonna open this package and see if they fit. If they fit in one of them, that's great. And then I'll take the other ball upstairs and give it to the other cats to play with, or I'll just put it aside and uh, keep it for when they lose the ball out of the turbo scratcher, and then I'll have an extra. I cleaned out uh, this downstairs area today. Could not find any of the turbo scratcher balls, so don't know where they are. So these balls are actually very lightweight. The balls that go with the turbo scratcher are a little bit heavier, but if they fit, I'd be really happy. They do have a pull tab, so when you pull it, they will light up. It says pull to activate. Okay, and then I think there is, is there a switch on them? There's no switch? No, okay, let's see. All right, so they're too big for this. And they're too big for this. They're way too big for these turbo scratchers. So it's just um, like a hard plastic ball that lights up. I guess they're motion activated. So I'll put one down here and I'll put one upstairs. Very disappointing that they don't fit. Hello, Ziggy. These are going to be lost in no time.
that's not gonna last long. It's about 10.15 p.m. and I am setting up their automatic feeders for tomorrow. And I have a few crunchies in both of the feeders, like the bigger feeders and the smaller feeders. And Stella was watching me put the crunchies in these new small feeders. She's trying to figure it out. Like, you know how the cats have those other feeders where they can like use their paws and get crunchies out of it? So she's trying to figure out how she could get the crunchies out of these feeders. There's literally like five pieces of crunchies in each one of those. I just want to um, put them in there to just keep the cats from waking me up tomorrow. That's one of the electronic toys that's going off. Um, and then also with the larger feeders, um, they're set to go off at 7 a.m. for breakfast and 7 p.m. But I'm going to be feeding the cats breakfast tomorrow, so I only put like three treats in each one. That way it's not going to disturb um, the schedule on them. And also then I could tell uh, if they're working properly um, when I go to fill them up tomorrow. I, I can see that the treats are in there or the treats are not in there. So this is uh, Stella Splash and Simba's, and these are booze by his door. It is about 11.30 a.m. I'm just about to leave. I'm running later than I thought I would be, but getting all of these feeders set up and getting everything ready took longer than anticipated this morning. So here are all of the feeders. The large feeders have their meals, and then the small feeders just have some treats in them. There's like eight treats in each section. It'll just give them something to do, keep them out of trouble, something to look forward to. We'll see how this works. All of the security cameras are set up. I have like little night lights set up. Um, I just scooped out all the litter and everyone has fresh water. So uh, everything should be good to go. And the thermostat is on. So in case it gets too hot, the air conditioning will kick on. Here's Booze. He's sleeping in a cat tower in my bedroom, but his is all set up. And let's take a look at what's going on down here. So here is the main crunchy feeder. I have adjusted it so it's not going to feed as many crunchies as it has previously. It's going to do like one and three quarters cups twice a day. So I have it set to go off at 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. So um, this will be their main meal um, tomorrow, like after 24 hours. But between now and tomorrow at this time, I do have these two meal feeders set up for them. And these feeders are set up with raw food for dinner, same as the bigger feeders upstairs. So they're gonna have raw food for dinner, which is now currently frozen solid. And by the time it's dinner time, it should be nicely defrosted with some freeze dried chicken. And then these also have freeze dried raw bites for tomorrow morning. However, by that time they will have had plenty of crunchies out of the feeder. So this will be just kind of like a supplemental feeding for them. So there's one here, Ziggy likes eating in this corner, and then there's three here, and then I put three here. So hopefully that'll be okay. This one already has moved, so um, I don't know if I should move that or keep it there. I might end up moving that one. There's a little bit of leftover breakfast, so I left that here. So I just moved this one over here. It was by the water bowl, but now it's here. So there's like four in a row here. Hello, Richard. Be a good boy, okay? So the cats got brushed this morning. I didn't have a whole lot of time to give them a lot of attention, um, but this toy's on. I just need to hit it and it should start rotating. There's Goldie, there's Ringo, here's Sammy, there's Nancy, there's Ziggy, and there's little Eva. She's like, what's going on here? All right, everybody, I want you to be good while I'm away, okay, Nancy? Okay, Sammy, and I just realized that I still need to set up two cameras down here, but the feeders are all set down here, water, litter, everything is done. I just put a little night light on for them, and now I just have to put two more cameras and we're good. Hello, Boo. How are you? It is 9.15 p.m. I just got home. Usually Boo greets me by the back door. I don't know why he wasn't doing that. Maybe he was watching from the windows. So now that I'm home, I need to do a few things. I need to walk around the house and look for vomit, and I need to check the feeders. So the large feeders should still have food in there for breakfast, 
and I can clearly see that the snack feeders are empty, which is good. Hey, doing boo? Did you miss me? I know you missed me, boo, because I could watch you on the I could watch you on the camera. I know you were sulking around the house. All right, let's see what's going on in here. So they ate their food and they have their breakfast left, or boo did. Here is Stella. Hello, Stella. Uh oh. I think I see some vomit. There's something there on the rug that does not look very pleasant. I don't know if that's all of it or if I need to look for more of that. Um, these snack feeders are empty also, which is good. Breakfast. Breakfast. And breakfast. So the cats ate all of the food in the feeders and there's just breakfast tomorrow in there. Look at this, Boo's hanging out with Stella. They probably want me to turn that toy on, but I have to finish walking around the house. So I'm very thankful that I did not have to sit in traffic to get home today. Um, I just got home, it took me less than an hour, no traffic. I mean, there was like a little bit of traffic like on the Cross Bronx and near the Throgsnack Bridge, but it wasn't like sitting in traffic for a half hour. So that's good because nothing drains energy like just sitting in bumper to bumper traffic. Here's Simba. How are you, Simba? Sometimes Simba gets a little mad at me if I go away on a little overnight trip. And then it takes a little time for him to warm up again. You doing good, Simba? Did you like your relaxing time alone in the house? Okay, so I just walked around the entire house. I don't see any vomit except for whatever that stain is on the rug. I don't know if it's part of a hairball or what, but um, everything looks really good. The cats had a really good time while I was away. I could see that on the security cameras and all of the feeders, including the new ones, worked really well. So tomorrow I will um, clean out all the feeders. They still have one meal left which is breakfast tomorrow. Hopefully they'll eat it and that'll give me a break from having to give them breakfast. And now let's go downstairs and look at the kittens. So I haven't even made it down the steps and I can already see problems, which I'm not happy about. So this is the automatic feeder and something that I noticed while I was away is that this automatic feeder is set to go off at like 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. But for some reason the timer in it is wrong and it was going off at like a completely different time. So I have to figure out what time this is gonna go off. It still says it has not served its 9 p.m. meal yet, and right now it is 9.19. But both of these platters are pretty much empty, so, so that's good, because the cats have been eating this. And this is bad, so it ends up for these kittens they don't like these feeders and so in the so on the right they had homemade raw food and on the left they had some freeze-dried raw bites look they didn't eat any of this and with the raw food you know it's not good for it to be sitting around like this because after 24 hours it starts turning and so look it's about 36 hours right now so I have to clean this tonight Here's another one, not eaten. With this one, someone ate the freeze-dried bites, but the raw is still there. This one is not eaten. Someone ate the raw food out of this one. Someone ate half of the raw food out of this one. And this one was not eaten. So what this experiment teaches me is not to do this for the cats next time because I don't know if it's a situation where they just don't understand that they're supposed to be eating out of these feeders uh, or they're just holding out for crunchies. But um, yeah, maybe if I was to use these feeders again, I would just fill them up with dry cat food and serve the dry cat food this way. But it doesn't make any sense to do that if I have this dry cat food dispenser dispensing food. And they're used to this one because this is the one that they used when they were outside. I had a very similar setup. I didn't have the two trays. I just had one bowl. And, you know, they would take turns with the bowl. Here's Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. There's Goldie. Hello, Goldie. 
There's Ringo. There's little Eva. She's under this chair. Here's Nancy. Here's Sammy. So this is not going to be fun at all, but at least now I know that they're not going to eat raw food out of these feeders unless they are somehow trained to do so. I'm also thinking that maybe if these were like the only feeders they had, then maybe they would have eaten it. But because they had the crunchies available, that could be another reason why they didn't eat it. So anyway, I definitely need to clean these up ASAP. It is 8.30 a.m. And I did not get much sleep last night at all. I have no idea why the cats were kind of restless. And I don't know, it was just a really weird night. So before I went to bed last night, I put out these feeders. And I put, I don't know, like six or seven little treats in each compartment. And I set them to go off at 4 a.m., and I set them to go off at 7 a.m. And I thought by doing that, I would keep the cats from waking me up. Well, instead of waking me up in the morning, like around 7 or 8, they ended up waking me up like around 3 o'clock in the morning, I guess because they were excited that the feeders were out and they were like anticipating what's in the feeders. So there's Stella, there's Simba, there's Boo. And I did not realize that at the time. Like, I didn't realize they were all kind of, like, hyped up because of the feeders. But what happened was I woke up this morning a little while ago. And these three were, like, on my bed. And I was like, what are they doing here? I thought, you know, I gave them the feeders. So I looked at all of the security camera footage. And it ends up that they were stalking the feeders pretty much most of the night. They were like sitting by the feeders and Boo has a feeder in his room. So he was walking back and forth from his room to this room, from his room to this room. And um, Stella and Splash and Simba, they were kind of like hanging out in this room. Then they were in the hallway looking at Boo's feeder. And yeah, they were pretty active during the night. And uh, Splash and Simba were chasing each other around the house. So that was good. But when I saw that, what it made me realize is that when I'm putting these feeders out for like snacks in the middle of the night to try to keep the cats um, from waking me up or to try to keep them more active at night, what I need to do is separate these and put like one of these in each room, especially because Boo kind of decided that they all belong to him and that he needed every snack that was in every compartment. So what happened was one of the lids would pop open, Simba would go and eat the treats, and then Boo would show up and bop him on the head and say, no, those are my treats. And Boo did the same thing with Stella. So I know Stella and Simba got a few of them. I don't even know if Splash got any. But I know Boo got most of them because Boo kind of took control. Like he would hang out in his room by his. And then if he heard one of these open, then he would come out and he would be like, no, that's mine. And these do make a little bit of a sound. They don't make like the big rotating noise like the bigger feeders do. Uh, they These make more of like, imagine dropping a piece of plastic. That's kind of what they sound like when they open. And I heard one of them open uh, in the middle of the night. I was like, what is that? Did something just get knocked over? And then I realized what it was. And then I was like, oh, okay, they do actually have a little bit of a sound. So since the cats were up and hunting most of the night, they should sleep well today. I would think that they would be kind of tired today from being up. I'm tired today from being up. And it's going to be a cloudy, rainy day. So that's going to add to the tiredness. And tonight, I am definitely going to try these feeders again, but I am going to split them up. So I'll keep one in Boo's room, and I'll put one in this room. I might change the location to make it harder for Boo to monitor both his and this one. And then I'm going to put one in the kitchen, and then I'll put one in the dining room so they'll all be separated. So if the cats want to hunt and stalk these feeders, which is what they did, then they're going to have to either spread out around the house 
or they're going to have to go from like one to another and we'll see what happens that way. It could be good exercise for them. It is 9 a.m. and here's Simba. Hello Simba, good morning. Here's Stella. Hello Stella. Here's Splash. Good morning Splash. And here's Boo. Hello Boo, good morning. I wanted to show you their snack feeders. So for the past two nights, they've been getting these feeders with a few treats in each compartment. They've been going off around 4 a.m. and around 7 a.m. And you can see this one's empty. And this one's empty. And this one's empty. And I have them in different rooms of the house. And this one's empty. So these have been working good. That being said, I don't know who's been eating the treats out of the feeders. I would have to check the security cameras to find out. And two of the feeders don't have security cameras on them. So I don't know um, who ate those. But um, yeah, I mean, it's been working out pretty good. Uh, no one woke me up today when Stella heard me moving. Um, then she came and greeted me good morning. But other than that, um, Simba did not jump on me in the middle of the night. That was nice. And uh, Boo did not jump on me in the middle of the night or anything like that. Not that Boo normally does, but Boo's usually the most active. Oh, so last night, let me tell you about what happened last night. So the kittens were downstairs, but I keep the back door open and the storm door shut so they could look out the back door. I keep it open like that for a while. And last night, I don't know, it was probably like 9.30 p.m. I'm in the kitchen, I'm cleaning up, and all of a sudden I heard like, I don't know, it was like a ruckus coming from the staircase where the kittens were, like behind the uh, kitchen door. So I open the door and I look, and like all the cats were on top of the landing, and they all go running down the steps. I'm like, they must have been looking at something outside because it sounded like, it sounded like they were like, hitting the screen door like maybe they saw something on the other side of it they're trying to paw at the door or something so then I go to Boo's room and Boo's by the window in his room and I can tell like when he sees something outside by the way he's like looking out the window so I'm like Boo what do you see what's out there I looked I did not see anything so I'm like that's weird so I open uh, the window a little bit further thinking oh, you know there's nothing out there well when I opened the window um, a cat showed up on the patio it must have been like right underneath the window and then it moved to the patio when it heard me because it got scared so it was either Bob or Baxter I can't tell them apart and it was just like looking at us and Boo was meowing at it like Boo's little cry at which point I was like, okay, Boo, I'm going to shut the window a little bit because I didn't really trust Boo near the open window with the cat outside. Even though, like, he looks at the cats all night with the window semi-open, I just shut it because I didn't want him getting agitated. Uh, I left it open a few inches. So then I was like, oh, so that's why the kittens made the noise by the back door by like the screen door because they saw that cat on the other side of the door and they were either being friendly toward it or I don't know trying to interact with it and that's what I heard so that's why that's the heard that that's the noise that I heard when they were like it sounded like they were hitting the screen door or something so eventually the cat walked away and I was going to I send a message to my neighbor down the block who feeds Bob and Baxter because she recently mentioned that most of the cats that she feeds are gone. They're mysteriously gone. She only has one left. And I'm thinking the one that visited is the only one left. And I don't know if it's Bob or Baxter and I really should find out what the name is. Now, I should also mention that recently when I've been checking the security camera footage at night, I only see two cats. I see the cat from last night, which is either Bob or Baxter, and then I see my neighbor's cat with the uh, collar on. Um, other than that, I don't see the amount of cats that I used to see in the past, and I don't think I'm going to anymore. Well, I'm hoping that I don't because um, a house, a few houses away that was contributing to the problem by 
constantly bringing new cats in and never having them spayed or neutered and then like contributing to the local population they moved out they no longer live there it recently got sold and i haven't seen anyone new move in yet but they did take the for sale sign down and I did see people there the other day. So I think it's just a matter of time before they actually move in. And then, of course, as I mentioned, um, the house next door to me that used to have a yard full of wilderness has been in the process of cleaning up the yard. And it's just a night and day difference. Um, usually they have a garage. They have like a big two car garage. It's usually like just full of stuff. And... I was shocked like I looked at it I just happened to be walking by the other day and I looked and it was all like cleaned out and I was like wow that was a big job that somebody did to clean that out but now they're actually using the space much more efficiently so between that yard being cleaned out and then the other house being sold it should definitely um, I should definitely see a difference with the local cat population the reason why I say that is because the house next to me with the wilderness yard was home to a lot of mice. That's why all of the wildlife um, would go there every day because they had a thriving mouse population. So I'm hoping that that goes down since the yard is cleaned out, that should reduce the mouse population there. And then with the other neighbors a few houses down, not constantly bringing new cats in, the people that are spaying and neutering the local cats are not gonna constantly have a new supply of cats. Like they're gonna be able to spay and neuter the current population without lots of new members being added to it all the time, which is good. So what that also might do for me is have the population more focused on like the other end of the street that I live on where the two other women are that um, spay and neuter the cats and they feed the cats they take care of the cats so that's great for them down there I am totally full I don't need any more cats and so that's why I think uh, things will be changing here hopefully for the better now we also have to remember that there is the situation with so many cats gone missing recently um, so I think that has been having a negative effect on the cat population and I haven't heard anything new about that since, you know, a few weeks ago when so many people were wondering what's going on. So I should probably reach out to the people on the other end of the street and see if they found out anything new about that. Uh, even just like walking around outside, um, if I'm taking walks or if I'm looking out the window, I don't see cats the same way that I used to see cats. So there's definitely been a change. Anyway, everyone here is waiting for breakfast. I just wanted to talk about um, what's been going on here and document the treat feeders. And yeah, so now I'm going to give everyone breakfast. This is a brand new automatic touch feeder for the kittens. And I've had this in a box. I never opened it and I'm cleaning out my storage room down here, getting rid of some stuff that I don't need anymore, making room for stuff. And I found this. So I said, let me put it together. Let me put some batteries in it. Let me put some dry food in it. Let's see if Sammy and the cats down here will use it. So that's what I did. It takes three AAA batteries and I put a few tablespoons of crunchies in it. I showed Sammy how to use it. The problem with this feeder is that this top part comes off and there's nothing holding it down. So if this gets knocked over, this top part is just going to fall off. The other one that I have um, for like Stella, her favorite one, um, it has like a, a piece on it that twists in and it locks. So that way if they knock it over, it's not gonna open. So I actually had to put some tape here. There's a little scotch tape here, some tape on the back. Hopefully that'll hold it. But it does have a very small sensor underneath it like the other one does. I don't know why it wasn't working just then, but um, I just shook it and some came out. Yeah, I don't know. It seems to be getting, getting stuck for some reason, which is weird. I'm 
Maybe it's getting jammed up. Yeah, for some reason, nothing's coming out. This, this is no good. Okay, I just banged it a few times. Let's see if it's working now. Okay, now it's working better. So uh, it looks like one of the pieces was stuck in there. And Sammy has been enjoying a snack. And Ringo is underneath the trampoline. He's right there. As soon as I leave, he'll probably come out. Um, so I'm going to just leave this camera on and let's see if, if they figure out how to use this. Get the treats out, Sammy. Oh, I was wrong. That's little Eva underneath the trampoline. Ringo just walked out. All right, I'm going to show them one more time how to use this. Watch, Ringo. Look. Ready? Look at this. See? Did you see the crunchies come out? Those crunchies that just came out. It's almost midnight and I wanted to show you what's going on down here because it's so funny. So I gave the cats this little kiddie pool today because I was cleaning out the storage room down here and this was in the storage room. So I have two of these. This is the smaller one and then I have one that's quite a bit larger but that one is in the loft above the garage. Um, probably going to get rid of that one because this one is a better size for the cats it's smaller so when I put it out here the cats were curious about it and they've been you know going in it and then I decided to see what would happen if I put that toy in it I think it's the three-in-one toy um, so as you can see the cats really like having that toy in the little kiddie pool and um, they also like Ringo likes to play from the outside because they could kind of see through the plastic the same way they could see through the rebounder. So uh, this should keep them entertained for a while. And I also gave them the touch feeder and I've been trying to teach them how to use it, but uh, they're not catching on as quickly as Stella did. So um, Ziggy might figure it out. But this touch feeder is not as good as the other one either. I do have another one of the kind that Stella has, so if this one keeps getting jammed up or if it doesn't work, I'll just replace it. So, anyway, that's what's going on down here. Hey, Richard. Hey, Ringo. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. There's some mice videos on the screen for them, so that's the noise in the back. So what Sammy likes to do with this toy is kind of go underneath the fabric and just hang out there with the wand that goes around.
There's no water in this tub. The only cat we're missing is Goldie. I don't know where she went. Here's Goldie. Hello, Goldie. How are you? You okay? You tired? Goldie is running around the house today. Right? Yep. Okay, Goldie. You relax. Here's a game. I just turned off that mouse video. They had the TV on all last night watching nature videos, so tonight they're not getting a TV on. Someone's running around upstairs. Okay, good night everybody. I think it's Boo. I think I hear Boo running around. Good night everybody. Enjoy your toys. I should also mention that last night I glued the stick onto the toy, so hopefully that stick will stay on the toy now, like the wand part. I used some super glue on it. It's about 10.30 a.m. and here's Simba, he's laying on the bed. He was all stretched out and I wanted to show you how big he is, how big all of these cats are, meaning uh, the original four, Stella, Splash, Simba, and Boo, because they're much bigger than the kittens. Um, Sammy's a small cat, Ziggy's a small cat, and these guys are big cats. So when Simba was all stretched out, he took up pretty much almost the entire bed and this is a queen size bed he took up almost the entire bed and that's what I wanted to show you because I was like these are big cats and here's Boo he wants you to know that he is a big cat too right Boo? he says he's big too so right now I have the vomit blanket that Sharon sent me in the dryer it was in the washing machine a little while ago now it's in the dryer I have it on low I'm waiting to get it back so I could put it on the bed uh, before I let the kittens up. It's been doing a good job. Um, you know, if there's any drool from the cats or anything, it's on the blanket. And it just got covered in cat hair. I vacuumed it a few times. Like, every few days I'll vacuum it. And I was like, you know what? I've been using it for a while. Let me put it in the wash. So... We'll see how it comes out through the wash. And here's Boo. So the cats just had their breakfast. They had homemade raw food for breakfast. For some reason, Simba did not really want to eat his. He ate a little bit of it. But he also had some dried sardines in those automatic treat feeders um, through the night. 
there was only one dried sardine in each feeder so it was only four sardines so i don't know if he has an upset stomach or if he uh, is just waiting for food that he likes better but boo had whatever Simba didn't want to eat. So Boo is feeling very happy right now because he had plenty of breakfast. And what I've been finding with the homemade food is I feel like the cats really like it better when I just give them chunky food instead of the ground up food. So I still grind up the bones. I grind up enough bones to, you know, equal 10% of the food that I make. And I also puree up the organ meats or grind the organ meats. But for the actual muscle meat, I've just been, you know, making it chunky for them. And they all eat it really, really well. They seem to really, really like it. I think what happens is that as they're chewing on the chunks of meat, they kind of go into this zone. It's almost like they zone out and they remember, like, days when they were, like, hunting. Because, you know, if they're eating a mouse or a bird, that's how they're eating it. They're really chewing it versus, like, a pate uh, or even, like, the canned chunks, which are just, like, really little pieces of meat. Um, when I chunk up their meat, they're usually, you know, like, one-inch chunks. Sam is going to drink some water right now, which is good because those dried sardines are probably a little bit salty. There's no added salt to them, but they do have natural salt. How you doing, Bo? So last night I added three different types of treats to the feeders and not a lot of them, just a few pieces. So there's like these soft blue buffalo treats. Um, not all the cats like them, some of the cats do. So I added like two or three of those to each compartment. And then I added one sardine to each feeder because I figured um, Simba can walk from feeder to feeder. I think he's really the only one that really likes the sardines. Sometimes Splash will eat them. Sometimes Stella will eat them, but usually it's only Simba. Um, so I gave him two at the early treat session, like around 4 a.m., and then two at the 7 a.m. treats. And then other than that, I just added like six to eight crunchies to each little compartment. So it was like barely anything. But it is enough to keep the cats, um, kind of in hunting mode in the early morning hours. I was looking at the security camera footage and Boo was definitely um, making the rounds, watching the feeders. I think they kind of know like kind of around what time the feeders are going to open and then Boo likes to make sure that he gets whatever's in them. And I definitely should put cameras on the other two that I don't know who's eating but um, but overall, I think they are serving their purpose um, by giving the cats a little bit of exercise at that time of the early morning and also giving them like something to hunt. What I was thinking of doing is actually taking their little mouse toys that you can put crunchies inside or treats inside and putting a few crunchies or treats inside the mouse toys and then putting the mouse toys in the feeders because then the feeder will open they got to take the mouse out and they got to move the mouse around to get the, the stuff out. I got to see if those mice will fit. Right, Bo? So here's the feeder and this is their little feeder mice. Let's see if it'll shut. <gasps> Look at that. It'll shut. That'll shut. Wow, I could do this. Look. Then it opens up. Then they have this. Are they going to be smart enough to get the treats out? That is the question. So that'll make them work even harder. So instead of just having to hunt the box and wait for it to open, once it opens, then they got to get it out of this. I think I'm going to try that tonight. It is 10.50 a.m. And I just lit Nancy up because she was crying by the door. I do have my tambourine in my hand. When Simba saw her, he ran around the house really fast in the opposite direction that she was in, and he went into my bedroom. So here's Nancy right now. How you doing, Nancy? You gonna hang out in here for a while? You okay? Is anybody under here? Okay, you're good. So I just shut the door. Nancy's in Boo's room, that's fine. 
and I checked on the vomit blanket and it's like half dry so I'm waiting for uh, it to fully dry in the dryer and here's Simba Simba says he doesn't want anything to do with Nancy he's afraid of her it's about five minutes later Nancy's been scratching at the door you gonna come out so I shut the door to my bedroom, Splash, Simba, and Boo are in there. So it's just Stella out here with Nancy. So I'm going to sit here with Stella. Their breakfast plates are still here. And I'm going to see what Nancy does. Is she going to try to attack Stella? Or is she going to leave Stella alone? Stella's watching her. My tambourine is at the ready. Stella's hissing. There's Nancy in the upper right. Nancy's moving very slowly, very cautiously. Stella's growling and hissing. Okay, so the tambourine works really, really well, except it seems to scare both of the cats, both Stella ran and Nancy ran. Nancy ran to the door. I just opened the door. She ran down the stairs. Tail is huge. Here's Stella. She's under the day sofa in Boo's room. I'm going to give her some treats because she did really good. Stella, you did really good. You did very good, Stella. Don't worry. She's downstairs. Even though I think Stella's afraid of Nancy. I don't know why all these cats are afraid of Nancy. Maybe Nancy's going to end up being the alpha. Nancy's very nervy. Right, Stella? That cat got a lot of nerve. But I'm happy the tambourine works. Except what happened was... Both of the cats were running in opposite directions, and then they eventually kind of came to the same place again. So then I shook the tambourine again, and then they ran in opposite directions and then came to the same place again. So finally, um, I was able to open the door and get Nancy downstairs. But I think they were both more scared than anything. Like, they were both scared, and their tails were huge. So it's much better for them both to be scared than to be attacking each other. Right, Stella? Here's another treat. There you go. There you go. And here's the little tambourine. So I try to keep it as quiet as possible. Like if I don't move it around, just hold it in my hand like this, it's re it can be really quiet. But the minute I just start shaking that, it freaks the cats out, especially Nancy. Even if I'm holding it, it makes like a little bit of a sound. Nancy gets freaked out. Good job, Stella. You did good. So now I'm downstairs with Nancy, making sure she's okay. You're okay, Nancy. Her tail is back to normal. And one of the things that I did last night or yesterday evening was I cleaned out my storage room down here. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but I cleaned out the storage room and it looks so nice. And um, I could actually access everything. So all the cat carriers are organized. I could easily access them. Uh, my suitcases are organized. I could easily access them. Um, there's cat supplies there that can be easily accessed. So that is really good. I got rid of quite a bit of stuff. So I have to go through that today and figure out, well, what am I going to donate and uh, what can I give away? That kind of stuff. So that's on the agenda. And I would like to do the same thing for this room the cats are in and then the room behind it. Um, I never show the room behind it because there's so much stuff in there and I need to go through it. And again, um, figure out what I'm going to keep, what I'm not going to keep. And there's a lot more stuff in that room. And that's going to take quite a while. So I'm hoping to do that later today. Um, I want to go out for a little while. There is a sale on London Broil at the local supermarket today, $1.99 a pound. That's what I've been feeding the cats when they have their chunky beef day. 
so i want to stock up on that they only allow like one twin pack per person which is two large london broils so i'm going to buy that and then i'm going to take it home and then i'm going to cut it up and then i'm going to freeze it already in chunks so that'll be a lot easier when i want to use it and i'm going to portion it out into the portions that i need for a meal i'm downstairs with the kittens and this tower of tracks toy and i cannot even tell you hello sammy I cannot even tell you how excited I am right now. Like, I am so happy. And let me tell you why. So, the kittens have lost every ball that was in this toy. And I can't find them anywhere. There's one, two, three tracks to this toy. And each should have a ball that goes around. The kittens got the balls out. But, when I was in the Dollar Tree the other day... I noticed that they had these packages of six table tennis balls and I was like let me get these and see if they fit any of the toys and guess what there's a ball missing here because it's in the track it fits perfectly in this toy and there's Ziggy and there's Sammy. Sammy's already like ready to play with it because they haven't had any balls in any of these toys in quite a while. So I just wanted to share this discovery with you. Maybe you already know about this, but I did not know about this. So I am going to put the rest of these ping pong balls in here, or maybe I'll just put one in each track and then they will have something to play with. Okay, I just added two more balls. And I know these are probably going to be gone within 12 hours. So I'm going to keep the other three. I might have to go back and like stock up. Now, yesterday, I purchased another one of these toys. They had them at TJ Maxx. They were $7.99. And I purchased them because they had six balls. There's two balls in each track. And I figured, well, at least they'll be able to play with it for a while. So now I actually have two of these. So I could keep one upstairs and one downstairs. And now that I know that these ping pong balls fit in here, I'll be able to get replacements easily. As you can see, Sammy enjoys this toy. And there's Ziggy and little Eva. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in their pool, in their little kitty pool. And that way, if they get the balls out, hopefully the balls will stay in the pool. I just put it in the pool. The cats love this pool. I'm actually thinking maybe I should go get my bigger one and give them that one. That way more cats can fit in it at the same time. Right now I think I've seen three in this at the same time. But the color of it, the blue color, keeps throwing off um, the camera's color. It makes everything else look more orange. It's really weird. See how it makes the rug look really orange? I don't know why certain colors of blue do that.
It is 11.15 a.m. And there's a whole bunch of birds outside. So there have been cats in these cat towers watching the birds. This is the kitten crew. And it's so funny because what happens is when the birds do certain things, then all the cats crouch down really low into a hunting position. And the older cats, I've never seen them do that, like all at the same time. It was like a bird flew by the window and every single cat that's looking out the window crouched down really low. You could see that the two that are on top of the cat towers are still crouched. Nancy's on the left and Ringo's on the right. And it is a gray and just kind of gloomy day today. That's why everything outside looks white. Here's Richard. So it's Nancy, Richard, Sammy, and Ringo. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of birds on the lawn. I don't know what they're eating. It's 2.40 p.m. and I have to show you something. I just noticed this for the very first time. Here's Goldie and her and Sammy are hanging out here on the steps because the landscapers just showed up and they're making a lot of noise. But look at Goldie, look, she has a little bit of a white bib. Do you see that? I never noticed that before. So I was looking at her today and I was admiring her fur because both she and Ziggy are basically orange tabbies covered with like black fur also. So I don't know if you could see it, but she has all her orange stripes um, because they're both like orange mackerel tabbies. And then they have black with that, which makes them like tortoiseshells. But look at Goldie's bib. Look, do you see she has a little bit of a tiny white bib? So she's a little bit tuxedo cat like Sammy. I thought that's really interesting because, you know, Sammy is probably closest with Goldie and Ziggy. I went downstairs a little while ago and the three of them were on top of the cat tower downstairs. And the three of them were hanging out together. And I've always said that Sammy is the closest to the torties than to any of the other cats. Now I can't zoom in any farther than I'm already zoomed in, but Look at Goldie's eyes. Her eyes are really, really pretty right now because near her pupil, she has green and then they go to like a golden color and then around the edges, they're brown. So they're really, really pretty. I'm trying to get her to look at me without freaking out. Look at me, Goldie, look at me. Yeah, she's freaking out because the landscapers are now near the back door. Look at her fur. Do you see the stripes? Do you see the orange stripes? So she's like an orange tabby with black. And she has a little tiny bit of a white bib like a tuxedo cat would. Goldie, look at me. Do you see her eyes? I don't know if I don't know if the camera's picking up her eyes because sometimes the camera doesn't pick up colors like they are in real life. So Goldie's eyes used to be more gold than they are now. And that's the same for like Splash Boo, Stella, Simba. Their eyes used to be much golder than they are now. And as they've been living inside and eating raw food, their eyes are getting more green. So I'm wondering if something similar is going on with Goldie's eyes. Here's Sammy. And look at what the cats did to the back door. Do you see this? So they've been peeling paint off the back door. And also um, when this door's open and then the screen door is there, the storm door, they've been taking the rubber off the bottom of that. So I actually have to go by 
some replacement. There's like a replacement. There's like a piece of replacement rubber that I have to get and um, put under there. So anyway, um, this is what they're doing in the back door. I'm going to have to have that dealt with. The problem is like the whole door is probably going to have to be painted now because I'm probably going to have to peel this. Like it's going to just continue to peel. I'll have to peel that off the back door and then just redo it. And it's going to be a big job. It's going to be a very big job. Do you hear the noise? Do you hear the noise? What's that noise, Sammy? What's that noise, Sammy? Hey, Goldie. Goldie, you're so pretty. Show us your bib. Let's see your white bib. Let's see your tuxedo colors. Here's Nancy. She's the other tuxedo cat in the house. Except she's not a black and white tuxedo cat. She's a tab and white tuxedo cat. Hello, Nancy. And here's Richard. He's so big. He might be the biggest of all the kittens right now. I was looking at him next to Ringo this morning, and I was like, they might be the same size, or Richard might even be bigger. It's 3.36 p.m. I just walked into the kitchen and saw this. This is Sammy taking a nap behind the back door. I don't know why, but for some reason, the kittens like to keep this door closed and lay behind it instead of keeping it open and laying in the sun. At night, they love to keep this door open and look out the back door, the storm door. But during the day, they always push it closed and lay behind it. It is 1.45 p.m. I just got home about 10 minutes ago and I opened this back door to let some sunshine in and to let the cats have a chance to look out the back door. This is what they did. They shut the door and there's Sammy and there's Ziggy. And they wanna lay here with the door almost totally shut. It might be because it's cooler for them, but I open it so that they have a chance to lay in the sun because cats love laying in the sun except I guess these cats like laying in the shade 